Okay. So, hi everybody. Welcome to EFT. Um, that stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. Um, can anyone tell me in the chat if they've heard of that before, if they've had any experience with it, um, if they know what it is before I get into a definition? No. Okay. Cool. So, another name for Another name that people use for emotional freedom techniques in this situation is tapping. And I've actually heard it referred to as emotional freedom tapping before, but generally that's not um, usually just used um, emotional freedom techniques. But what it is, is a series of points. So kind of similar to the idea of, acupress or of acupressure or acupuncture. Yeah, so tapping, basically it would involve tapping on the meridian points. So a lot like, a lot a lot of people say it's like acupuncture, but instead of using needles, which um, <laughs> we talked about overcoming recklessness earlier, that is one thing I'm not going to, I'm not going to stick needles in people because that would not be safe for anybody. <laughs> so I definitely prefer the method of tapping and it can also, one of the other advantages is that it can also be done virtually. So it's been something I've been able to learn and practice during quarantine as well. So one of the, the idea behind it is that the reason for a mental, physical, any kind of dis-ease or any kind of situation, mental or physical, is a disruption in the flow of your energy. What will happen is that we would tap on the points and there's like, there's a formula, a pattern to how we do this. And some of the points are chakra points that people would be familiar with, but some are not. They're meridian points. And we're going to do a tap on those points. So kind of like kind of like this, if you can see what I'm doing. When you tap against the points, it helps to it helps to readjust the energy flow so that you don't have the the difficulty. So are there any questions about it so far? In any case, so for the, type, the formula that we use as far as the points, so what I was showing you was what's called the karate chop point, which is the side of your hand. And this is where you would start and you would just tap in a rhythmic, you know, however, at whatever pace you feel like, just tap on this portion of your hand. And that is what you're going to do for your setup statement. And we'll go over what that is in a minute. But I'm going to show you the, the points first. And I will, when we actually do rounds of this, I will show you the, uh, I will mention the points as well. So, from there, you would next go to the top of your head, the center of the top of your head, and you would tap. The next point is your eyebrows. So it's right where your the hair of your eyebrow begins at by your nose. Now, where this comes in is you can either do one or both. I like to do both because it's a, it's a, for me, about balance, but again, it's totally a personal choice for anyone. You can do one or both of them. You can use, I use both one hand, I'm going to go like this, um, tap each side of it. You can use two hands, doesn't matter which hand you use. If you want to just do one, it doesn't matter at all. It's the, the energy will resonate in the area that you're tapping anyway, so it doesn't matter which you actually choose to do. The next 
point is the side of your eye where your the bone is. And after that is underneath your eye and also it's on the bone. You have a point under your nose and above your lip, under your chin, or sorry, under your bottom lip in the little indentation where your chin is. And then the next point, you can either kind of tap or a lot of people I know like to kind of slap it. It's by your collarbone area right here. Um, I don't know, hold on, the headphones might be in the way. So, in the collarbone area, and a lot of people, like, actually, instead of just tapping with one finger, will actually, like, kind of slap the area. And then the last one is under your arm for... Women, one way of telling that is by where the where a bra strap would be. Um, so it's not, it's just under the, not actually in the armpit itself, but just underneath. So, let's see. Okay. So what we would do, and I'm just, again, going to give a basic explanation and then be thinking about if you would want to volunteer to do an experience of tapping with me. And so we can see how it would work. So the first thing the first thing you would do and I'm going to try doing this I'm going to show you kind of with something that I have had some some trouble with for a while so what I am what I would do is first start on the karate chop point and I would say something like even though I have had difficulty with staying motivated while staying at home. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And you would do that three times. So even though I have had difficulty being motivated during this time of quarantine, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I have had difficulty being motivated during this time of quarantine. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Now you would do a round of tapping. So you would start with the top of your head and say something like, I've been feeling unmotivated. You would go to the eyebrow, and again, your choice. Um, it's been difficult to stay motivated. <laughs> you go to the side of the eye, and again, I like to do all of the points where I can do both hands. I like to, or where you can do one or both. I tend to like to do both because it feels more balanced. <clears throat> it's hard to focus. No, under the eye. I have so much trouble being motivated. <laughs> Under the nose. I'm just acknowledging that I've been feeling unmotivated. I'm just acknowledging that I've been feeling unmotivated. And I'm just giving a voice to my feelings. And then you would go to the collarbone. It's been really hard to stay motivated. It's been really hard to stay motivated. 
-hmm. And under the arm. It's been really hard to be motivated. Can you go? A lot of times you do three rounds. Again, that's that's up to you though. You can assess, excuse me, how you're feeling before um, before going on. I usually will do. There are a couple of ways you can do this. There's actually the science. There's science for both of these ways. So one way is you can focus on the negative the entire three rounds um, and then go into something more positive. Another way is you can alternate between the negative and the positive. So I usually will depend on how I feel. Usually when I do something like that, the basic formula is to focus on the on the negative and acknowledge it so that that way then you can bring in the positive once that's kind of unblocked and you can have a cognitive shift around it. So that's how I've been tending to do it. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I noticed that other people are tapping and saying the same phrases along with me. That's really good. Um, we call it borrowed benefits. And what it means is that if no matter who the person tapping is, if you tap along with them, you get the benefits as well, as does the, as does the practitioner. So it's it's a good thing to have in practice if if someone's tapping and you want to just tap along uh, we do that a lot with the videos that we um, that we train with because of borrowed benefits so they can help they can help us too even if it's not necessarily our own situation so hopefully that makes sense um, so I'm going to just go ahead and do the second round. And again, there are all of this, a lot of what goes into this actually is intuition because you pick the words that resonate and you pick the words that, if you're a practitioner, you pick the words that you try to find the words that resonate best with the person you're working on. If it's for you, then you, you pick the words that resonate the most with you. And a lot of times, if you let your intuition be your guide and, you know, listen to, well, listen to the force, as it were, or to your feelings, whatever you want to call it, you can actually have a much deeper session. I think some of the best ones I've had were when, people just wouldn't, didn't think and would just kind of let go and go with the flow. And when the words came up, it was pretty remarkable because they would often resonate and be very powerful and the most healing. So I feel like it's best to not think about it and just kind of clear your mind and go with the flow. So I'm going to go ahead and do a second round of, so how are you, how are you feeling? The people who are doing, who are saying it along with me, how are you feeling about that? Because I'm guessing it may have resonated with you. How are you feeling about once you tapped on it? Like at what, from, usually we do from zero to 10, like at what level is that? So I'm not sure if I can call it a level, but okay. I definitely felt some form of energy that went through those points when I was doing it, like a tingling sensation that's less than, it's not numb, but it mm -hmm. feels really good. I don't know how to really describe it. Yeah, no, I understand that. So it, it's kind of electric. 
Would is that would that be an accurate? Yes, that would be yeah. that would be an accurate description. Okay. Yeah. So because these points are connected, and because the flow is because it is kind of re adjusting the energy in a person, it does, it is, it makes sense that it would feel electrical. And that is one thing I was going to mention after we did some, some more tapping, but one thing that you want to make sure you do after this class is have some water and get some rest because it is kind of a readjustment in the flow of your energy. So you do want to make sure that you stay hydrated and get some rest. So what usually happens, is there is there anything you want to tap on in particular? Anyone got any ideas? I'm all out of them. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> We're all weary at this point. <laughs> but okay. what well, you did say already was something that was really weird because Gabe and I were talking about that very same thing, what, like, like two hours ago? Mm-hmm. About all the motivation? Yeah, we had, a, we, had, we, had I was on, we were on the phone and we started talking about how we're not feeling as motivated as usual. Oh, yeah. I've had to travel a little bit. When you started saying it, I was like, okay. <laughs> Stop that now. <laughs> again. Yeah, well, I, I guess we're, we're in alignment because that's, that's me. That's been me too. Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Three, two, five, okay. <laughs> Wait. What else? Kind of okay. like waving your arm after a muscle spasm. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like we're... So okay, so I see some some numbers here, and that actually we could bring we could continue to tap on that and bring some of those down because we wanted as close to as close to zero as possible as far as like because ten if I were feeling ten it would just be really unmotivated I wouldn't want to do anything um, and zero would of course be the opposite so. The goal is to get it to get it to where you're feeling down to down closer to zero. So what you would do at that point is you would start kind of start over but not. So you would take your setup statement and you would say you would start tapping on the karate chop point. And you would say, even though I still feel a little unmotivated During this time of quarantine, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I still feel that it's hard to stay motivated during quarantine, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though it's still difficult to stay motivated during this time of quarantine, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And you would go to the top of your head. I'm still having trouble being motivated. We also look like a bunch of fools here, so just... That's <laughs> okay. I'm doing it too. If somebody wants to have the volume on, they'd wonder about it. They'd worry about our sanity, I think, at this point. Uh, <laughs> we're Jedi. They already worry about our we sanity. We are. <laughs> yes. My mom is just like, what are you doing? No. I know. Well, thankfully, everyone here knows that I tap, so it wouldn't be too. 
It wouldn't be too surprising. I don't think I knew that until this morning, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. But I mean, at my house, like, if anyone walked in here, it wouldn't oh, be that's... all that shocking. <laughs> well, we did do this in Chicago Jedi, right, Gabe? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. You can teach this to them really easily. Yeah, I mean. The forehead, the top of your head, between yep. your eyebrows. Between your eyebrows. Under the your side eye. of your eye, the side right. first, and then under. under, and then under, and mm-hmm. under your nose, under your nose, under, under your, your lip. chin, no, under, yeah, under your lip, keep saying, under your lip, then your um, collarbone, collarbones, mm-hmm. and under and your arm, under your arm, mm-hmm. got it, I got yeah. it, so now, so that's actually, that's actually the first level of, of EFT certification is learning how to do it for yourself because mm-hmm. it's it's a healing modality so you want to put yourself first because you can't heal other people if you're not healed at least it's a lot more difficult <laughs> that's true that it's the same thing I'm also a Reiki practitioner but I figured that was a lot harder to teach over the computer well, you're going to hear from me because I just started studying that, so I'll, oh. definitely, I'll definitely be in touch. Excellent. Like, okay. EFT, I'm still working on. I'm almost done with my second level, and I'm going to go to the master teacher level. Reiki, I already have my uh, master certification. Cool. And again, that that is so much more hands-on that there was no way I was going to try to do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I've been this whole time, and I've been saying stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I was wondering how much does it cost? Oh, the certification, or yeah. yes. Oh, well, it depends where you go. There are different. The class I took, so I was. It depends how much, how far you want to go with it. If you want to go all the way through master, it's. It was something like thirteen hundred dollars, and they let me put payments in. Um, so, I my intention was very clear that I was going to go all the way up through it. If you're wanting to go through like level one or two, it's a lot less. Mm-hmm. As far as cost, I don't remember what it was because I just went for the whole. <laughs> um, I'm a gorilla. Yeah, because I, my friend is a practitioner, and she was doing some sessions with me, and they were so good that I wanted to learn how to do it as well. (laughs) And so I've been practicing for a few months now, and it's it's been an incredible help. Um, It can help with physical ailments. To some degree, like I'm not, it's not a replacement for medic, like medicine, but it can help with. I've used it for things like stomach pain or something in my leg. If if something happened, you can just tap on it. You just would be very specific. So you'd say something like, even though I have this pain in my leg, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And you would just go around and tap the areas of. Um, tap the points and just save this pain in my leg and then sometimes it'll move so you keep tapping on the point and you keep tapping and just change you just change where it's located mm. okay. call, it's cool. called chasing the pain So what we yeah what we do a lot of times is three rounds without stopping and then we take a deep breath and then assess. So it doesn't just have to be the one round. I'm just showing you the basics, but we usually will go three rounds in succession and then stop and reevaluate how we feel. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So are there any other either things you would like tapping on or things you would like to ask about or 
I think you did really well. I did too. Any questions? Absolutely That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Very, very clear and organized and very simple, actually. I'm like, Thank oh, you. no, it's very complicated. It's not complicated. <laughs> oh, no. No, that's what I love about it. It's. I love, there's a couple things. I love that it's not complicated, that, that mm -hmm. anyone can can learn it. I love that it's, I love that it acknowledges the negative as well. I, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that aspect because there's a lot of, a lot of self-help type things that will go into, oh, just focus on the positive, don't even, but the negative's still there. And mm -hmm. If you don't deal with it, if you don't get the, like even with, with when I do Reiki, a lot of times I will take negative energy out first. That's why I have to be careful when I do it that I'm not picking up on energy. But basically, I, I try to take the negative out so that I can replace it with the positive energy. Mm. So... Uh -oh. Yeah, I actually learned a little bit of um, Reiki shamanism, which is what someone that's what someone called it. It's a very interesting idea of using the Reiki energy, but also doing some um, some shamanic techniques. I had one teacher show me a little bit of that, so it was interesting. That sounds interesting for Gabe to look into. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised I haven't heard about it before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's actually a book called Reiki Shamanism as well. So All right, we're looking I, that up right now. Yeah. <laughs> Let me look that up, Gabe. <laughs> if you don't get it by Christmas, I think Chicago Jedi just found your Christmas gift. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> First Christmas in July. So. Yeah, I'd contribute to that. <laughs> Reiki shamanism. Let's see. Okay, wait a second. Hang on. Give it a second. Reiki shamanism: a guide to out of body healing. Wow. That is called shamanic Reiki. And it's expanded ways of working with universal life force energy. There's several books in this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looky, looky. Oh, yeah. We're on a library. I'm a library. I'm, yeah. <laughs> somebody has to be. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, and ask me for asking about a book. I'll go straight to a book. There you go. <laughs> There's several EFT resources uh, as well. The sort, the place I'm going is International Metaphysical University. Oh wow! My friend goes to EFT Universe, which does clinical EFT. So I've kind of I've kind of done a um, mishmash of the two because I like her style, but I also like um, the way my teacher does it, the different techniques my teacher uses. So I kind of do a mishmash depending on who I work with or what it is that's needed. Cool. I, I like the idea of taking the best of everything like whether it's you know religions of the world or you know whatever concepts I'd like to to look at them and kind of take the take the things that I like from them and kind of form my own practice whether it's it's force work with healing or whether it's religion or whatever concepts so That's cool. Yeah. One thing I like to do at the end of an EFT session is kind of imagine, do something where you imagine yourself in a bubble. And when you do that, you surround yourself with the color or symbol that resonates with you at the moment that you need for your protection and healing at this time. And what you 
to do is go invisible and see anything that's not you and imagine a vacuum sucking that out, sucking out all that, anything that's not you, negative energy type stuff. And come back to your bubble and imagine a cord grounding you going from your gut into the earth, grounding you to the earth. Now imagine a golden light coming down and going in through the top of your head and coming down and meeting with that grounding cord. And when you're ready to come back into the come back into the space and know that you are safe and well and protected. Uh, that noise, I keep hearing that background noise. Yeah, I hear static. I don't know, but um, was that helpful? The, uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that was good. Yeah. That was really good. That was really good. Okay. So. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this and offering to do it. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Thank I'm, you. I'm glad I was able to.